Hello guys and welcome to Freebirds Cube and welcome to 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and this is day 9 and in this video I will tell you about the NLP another technique that is called negative sampling. We we'll discussed about the word embeddings in our last video so in this video we'll talk about negative sampling that is the upgraded version of that and along with the globe algorithm and their python implementations so just be with it because their python implementations are really really amazing you will get the word that you always wanted okay so if you want to know more about the word embeddings how they work you can watch my day 8 video and the link is in the description so let's get started with the negative sampling okay so the negative sampling objective is that instead of predicting the probability of a word being a nearby word for all the words in the vocabulary, negative sampling changes the complete problem here. So, okay, it focuses on predicting whether a pair of words are nearby or not. Okay, for example, if I just say, uh, I don't predict that whether juice is near to orange, I will predict whether orange are juice near words or not so i will make it whole kind of this problem a binary classification problem from the multi-class classification problem okay so that that will reduce my expense resources and everything as well okay so now that what actually happens inside it so first thing is randomly selected negative words okay so to update the weights a small number of negative words are randomly selected and those negative words for which we want the network to output zero okay because these words are not even getting predicted okay for example for the training sample of orange and juice negative words might be randomly selected like apple dinner dog chair house these kind of words are like that so that our neural network will have ample amount of data and it will do the successful BAP propagation as well okay and then then we calculate the loss okay so during that training process the probabilities are calculated for each of the positive pair that is called orange and juice and along with the negative pair and for that they are zero okay the loss is computed based on the predictions and the only weights corresponding to the positive and negative words are only getting updated so the rest of all the words probabilities are not getting calculated here okay for example if i just say the loss is calculated based on the predicted probabilities of juice apple dinner dog chair and hour for that given iteration okay okay now let's talk about the loss calculation formula okay so the objective function in the skip gram with negative sampling consists of two terms okay representing the two aspects of the training objective the first term aims to maximize the probability of occurrence for actual words that lie in the context window. It focuses on maximizing the probability of co-occurrence for words that, that, that are actually observed together in the training data. For example, if we consider more focus on maximizing the probability of uh, orange and juice pair are nearby words or not, okay, so that will be our uh, like first term that he used to maximize the probability of occurrence okay now the second term okay the second term iterates over randomly sampled word which are negative words that do not lie in the window and minimize their probability of co-occurrence and we will try to make it more minimized as well okay for example to minimize the probability of orange to apple orange to dinner orange to dog orange to house and to maximize the probability of orange to juice only okay so in that way and now if we talk about the another part that is the probability of sampling a word is determined by its frequency raised by the power of 3 by 4 okay the power of 3 by 4 where uw is called unigram distribution that means it's a one gram distribution that is one word uh, is tokenized from the whole sentence okay and the adjustment ensures that the less frequent words are sampled more often compared to very frequent words okay so that their importance can also be known okay Th there is a negative sign as you just see here okay so that negative sign shows uh, that 
टू मैक्सिमाइज द वैल्यू फॉर ए सेकेंड टर्म एनकरेजेज द मॉडल टू मिनिमाइज द को अकरेंस ऑफ द रैंडम सैम्पलिंग वर्ड ओके सो दैट अवर नेगेटिव वर्ड शुड अकर लेस एज कंपेयर टू अवर वर्ड्स दैट वी वॉन्ट टू प्रोडिक्ट दैट इज ऑरेंज एंड जूस दोज वर्ड शुड अकर मोर एज कंपेयर टू द ऑरेंज और एप्पल ऑरेंज और डॉग दिस कैंड ऑफ वर्ड्स एज वेल ओके ओके नाउ देर इज ए ऑल्स अनदर वर्ड दैट इज कॉल्ड पैरामीटर के दैट पैरामीटर के द नंबर ऑफ नेगेटिव सैम्पल्स चूज एंड ड्यूरिंग द ट्रेनिंग ओके सो यू कैन डिसाइड दैट हाउ मैनी नेगेटिव सैम्पल्स यू वॉन्ट फ्रॉम फाइव टू ट्वेंटी एज वेल ओके दैट यू कैन डिसाइड इज सी दैन दैन देर इज अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट द कॉन्सेप्ट वी ऑलरेडी रेड इज कॉल्ड नेगेटिव सैम्पलिंग बट देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल्ड सब सैम्पलिंग ओके दैट सब सैम्पलिंग इज वर्ड इन ए कॉर्पस दैट डू नॉट हैव द यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सम वर्ड्स अकर मोर फ्रिक्वेंटली दैन अदर्स ओके द हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी वर्ड्स आर लाइक द इज आर दे अकर लाइक वेरी फ्रिक्वेंटली बट मे नॉट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सिग्निफिकेंट मीनिंग टू द सेंटेंस ओके सो द गोल ऑफ सब सैम्पलिंग जस्ट रिड्यूज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ वेरी फ्रिक्वेंट वर्ड्स ऑन द ट्रेनिंग डेटा ऑफ द वर्ड एम्बेडिंग सो वी अमिट सम इंस्टांसिस ऑफ हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी वर्ड्स इज डन टू इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ लर्न एम्बेडिंग ओके सो वी जस्ट रिमूव और लाइक डिक्रीज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी वर्ड्स इज डू नॉट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट एज सर ओके फॉर वर्ड्स दैट अकर वेरी फ्रिक्वेंटली अ पोर्शन ऑफ देर इंस्टांसिस इज रिमूव कंप्लीटली फ्रॉम द ट्रेन डेटा एज वेल एज फ्रॉम द इनपुट वर्ड्स एज सेड ओके ओके इफ आई जस्ट गिव एन एग्जाम्पल let us say we have word the and instead of considering every occurrence of the during the training sub sampling might involve omitting a certain percentage of its occurrences we just remove it okay and by sub sampling our model can focus on the more meaningful contextual relationship between the actual words we have okay so in that way this whole thing will work and now if we talk about the training time of word to vec can be significantly reduced by using the multiple cpu machines but if you talk about the skip gram model and the cpu w model as well so the architecture says that the skip gram model is slower than the cpu w model and hierarchical softmax in the training algorithm we say better than the infrequent words versus negative sampling okay if we use it in that way and then if we talk about the sub sampling of frequent words that can improve the both the accuracy and speed okay if we just remove those uh, words like the is and are these words should move so that can increase the accuracy and the speed of the model as well then then we talk about the uh, dimensionality of word vectors they are usually better so but we should make a kind of a threshold of that we should not increase it more as the uh, our model become more ex- expensive as well and then we talk about the context window so the skip gram context window is usually 10 but for cbw it's always 5 okay so just remember this is the how you can increase the performance of your skip gram and cbw models in the word vec okay so now there is a next method that is called count base method okay goal of this count base method is to capture the word co occurrences representing the relationship between the words okay so the word to vec capture word co occurrences by using the sliding window approach okay that learn the embeddings one context window at a time okay in the window it just learns in that way so the count base method offers an alternative approach so instead of using the sliding window they capture the frequency of co occurrence in a matrix in a just single pass or a single iteration okay and the count base method are computationally simpler and more efficient than training a whole neural network over a sliding window okay so they involve creating a co occurrence matrix which directly capture the word to word relationship in a single iteration through the whole corpus okay so similar to the one hot representation these count base methods also face the problem of dimensionality reduction because they are creating this matrix that matrix can be larger as compared to the corpus as well so if corpus has so many words the matrix can be so big as well okay so that shows how it is ad- uh, good or bad as well 
Now, if we talk about, we use the word-based or uh, we use the window-based methods like word to vec to capture the complex patterns beyond the word similarity but may be inefficient in term of statistical usage and the count based methods make efficient use of statistical usage but fail or struggle to capture the complex underlying patterns so you can use these two method based on your problem statement if you want to capture the complex pattern then use the word to x if you want to make use of the statistical usage then use the count based method because it will give you more clear statistics about the words as well okay so now so now let's talk about our glove algorithm okay so that glove model is basically a hybrid model uh, between the count based and window based models and the advantage of glove is like that uh, it is not work like word to vec it does not rely on the local statistics or the local context information of the word but it incorporates global statistics okay it can make the use of word co-occurrences along with the count based methods as well to obtain the word vectors okay so is this is the like uh, formula of the glove uh, objective function so you can say, say that for every word of i and j that might co-occur we try to minimize okay see we try to minimize the difference between the inner product of their word embedding that is ui and uh, vj and the log of their i, I and j okay and the term pij allows us to weight lower some very frequent co-occurrent word and cap the importance of very frequent words okay so in that way we just uh, like uh, make those most occurring words or frequent words like is and the we can make them capped we don't give them much importance and we give them much importance to the highly contextual words only in in that way okay so it uses the word co-occurrences here as well and also the count based methods as well okay if we talk about the advantages of this glove so advantages like that unlike the window based methods where we need to optimize one window at a time so glove we just need to optimize one count at a time okay and it is scalable as well because rare words in a huge corpus don't occur very often okay so glove allows us to capture the semantics irrespective of the occurrence of a word because it used the count based method okay it helps in the model performing well even on a small scale and small vector sizes as well because it used the statistics here as well okay okay so now you know about the negative sampling about the count based methods and about the glove algorithm now let's do their python code implementation now okay so here is the python code implementation of negative sampling okay so we just first get the word to vec model here and i show you that how the word to vec is different from the negative sampling model okay so we import the word to vec and then import the word tokenize this is our complete corpus and we first tokenize our sentence and then we're using the word to vec model we give the sentence vector size window size and sc and minimum count as well okay this is how word to vec model will work we already seen in our previous cd as well but in the negative sampling negative sampling we give a new kind of uh, attribute is called negative okay so in that way it is just take five random words as i just already talked about in previous slides we take the five random words here okay so in that way it predict the word we predict the word with the both of the models and they predict the same word the same word because our corpus is too small if it is too big then in that way it can predict even more as well but you can experiment with the vector size as well if i increase the size by 1000 you can see my word will going to be change okay now the next word will be they if i increase it even more then this will again got to be changed okay so in that way you can experiment and do some more kind of research work on that okay now let's talk about the count based method okay the count based method is work in the same way we have the corpus here and we use the cosine similarity to capture the similarity between the words okay now we try to capture this way we build a complete vocabulary here to build the our co-occurrence matrices and for each word we try to find it and then give him a 
uh, index as well and then build a complete coherence matrices by using the length of vocab and the length of vocab to make the zero matrices about that and then we fill that zero matrices with our all the values we have and all the counts we have using this simple python code okay it has that two window size two and then it generates those words and calculate the cosine similarity here to generate this complete matrix okay so in this matrix it shows that where two words occur and they have like a uh, very good relationship as well and this shows what is the relationship between them that how likely similar they are okay so in this way you can get it the cosine similarity matrix like that as you just see that uh, with only just these three sentences this matrix becomes so large okay so when i use a full corpus of the english language so how much big this matrix can be okay so that's why it is prone to dimensionality curse okay okay now let's talk about our glove algorithm implementation okay so we first have this corpus here and we first uh, use the counter function to count the words okay and then we have this uh, svd model to do the principal component analysis and then we have our glove model and we put these two objects in this pipeline so that every time we give him a corpus it does the uh, word count as well because we know that the glove use the count based method as well and also the window method as well so and then we tokenize it and after doing the token organization we try to build a complete kind of max length sequence to the sequence here there is just a complete simple python code cause we are going to train the uh, neural network here okay so we build the x and y and then we build a neural network here just small lstm network and then based on that network we train over this whole model and then when i give them a input sequence of word embeddings are so i need it should predict the word for powerful here and it predicted successfully right here okay so in this way the glove method is that much powerful because it actually uses the two techniques at a once to give you the best model as possible give you the best output as possible as well okay okay so if you guys like this video please uh, subscribe and share with your other friends and if you want to know about the prompt engineering data science and machine learning you can watch my youtube videos and also read read my blogs on medium we'll meet in our next video thank you guys thank you so much